from verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. Verse 2. And the Spirit, and the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, that I heard him that spake unto me. You have sat under the ministry of Aaron's. And where the power of Aaron is coming from, he has entered inside of you. You know what I'm talking about. Those places where you go, they tell you, get pregnant in two days. <laughs> Those places will tell you that in two weeks time, you'll get married. Those places they tell you that the color of the inner wear you're putting on. If you have ever gone there and sat down, I give you God's word, you need deliverance. I went to a place to minister. I was sent. Not just to minister, but to break whatever power that was buried in that place. Somebody was running the church. I won't mention the place, but here in Port Harcourt. Right here in Port Harcourt, here. And when she was running a church, and the, the day of her fellowship, the road where the church is, is blocked, closed, because of crowd of people. But the day the secret leaked, as I'm talking to you, the person I'm talking to you is dead right now, long ago. The husband of the woman that owned the church came to the office here. I spoke with him face to face with Pastor T.A. George. And some of you have been in places like this. Where Aaron is the minister in charge. This person buried something under the pulpit. And the one that he buried under the pulpit is the one that makes, enables her to see into your life and tell you the number of your telephone. Tell you the corner of whatever you are wearing and so on and so forth. And he buried another one at the entrance of the church where the signboard is and they call it crowd puller. Some of you here are <laughs> juju converts. <laughs> spell converts. Spell members. And that's why I call them congregation of the living dead. You've come under that spell. And another one was buried in the office where her office. And when you step into that place on that office, whatever she opens her mouth to say, you will do it. If he says, go and sell the property you have, bring the money, you, no argument. Talk on do. I am not telling you what happened in America or in Lagos. I'm telling you, I went, I went there myself to pray and to break those nonsense. And you're here. And you're wondering what is happening to you. You don't know where you went to. He went to the ministry of Aaron. And the spirit by which he speak has entered inside of you. And if nothing is done, that is how it will be ravaging your life. And pass from Generation to generation. So the foundation was faulty and was bad. The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 3, 34, when God sends a man out, when God calls a man and sends him, that man speaks God's word. Hello? He speaks what? God's word. For whom, him whom God has called speaks what? The word of God. Pastor, what do you speak to them? Is it God's word or motivational write-offs of men? 
seven keys of prosperity. Don't get me wrong. The church need to prosper. I didn't hear you say amen. Because without money, you won't gather here. So we need money. And that is the truth. But listen to me. All those motivational thoughts and the devil is the master, the one masterminding it. And gradually, gradually stealing the word of God away from people. If you take a statistics now, you realize and discover that majority of people that are here now, they, they are not having their Bible. You say, what are they having? They are having tablet. iPad. Am I correct? This is a systematic way the devil has employed to do what? To take away the word of God. Do you still read your Bible? Let me tell you, there's no way, listen, I, I'm talking with an experience. I can't concentrate and gain something. We would say I'm reading from the handset, I'm reading from iPad, than when I'm opening my Bible to read. I, I, am I talking to somebody? This is the devil's wickedness. Gradually, gradually, the word of God is disappearing from the heart of people. What did the Bible say? He said the entrance of the world does what? Give it light. When you don't have light, you will walk in darkness. You will stumble in darkness. The entrance of the world, Psalm 119. Verse 130. The entrance of the world giveth light and giveth understanding to the what? To the simple. He whom God sends out speaks the word of God. Pastor, what do you speak to them? Do you speak to them the word of God? Or you browse internet. As you browse internet, you now look at quotational, all those motivational quotes and gather them. From John Maxwell and John this one and that one and you compile them and you go and look to them. Where is the word of God? May God have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Who are these errands? As we talk about. Like you have known many of you have gone there and sit, you know, sat under their ministries. And they have laid hands upon you. Some of them, it's a terrible thing. The mummy water from where they got their power. And they have, you know, infected many people in their church, the women in their church. Because they keep renewing that evil power with immorality, with the women in the church. A man was invited to come to preach in the church. And a hotel room was booked for him. But in that hotel, there's somebody that, was working, that works in that place. That also belonged to the church that invited this person. But unknown to the the host minister. The person invited also had booked another room personally for himself. Apart from the one the, the host booked for him. And he has about two, three, two or three rooms. And each of these rooms, that's how women were inside that place. And at the end of the program, listen to me. Each of the day, People from the church where this guest minister came to preach were visiting this man. But because of the marine power, the evil power by which he was operating, virtually all those women that came for counseling and visited the hotel, he slept with them. And this small person that was working in that, that was in that rest in the uh, hotel, when he saw this, he ran to the pastor and said, sir, sir, 
I, I don't think you know what is going on. This is this. This is this. The man said, no, it can't be. It cannot be. It cannot be. He said, I'm telling you, I, I, that is where I work. The man said, okay. At the end of the program, he's applied wisdom and cornered all the women, the music and everything, and started talking. They didn't know where he was going. He asked them, did anybody at, at least, you know, show kindness, uh, visitation to our guest minister or say thank you or whatever? And how many of they raised hands up? <laughs> Men and brethren, the man carried his hand on his head. Let me use my word now. And he be start all over again and began to conduct deliverance for all the women. What I'm telling you is in Portacot here or not in Lagos. Where have you gone to? Where have you gone to? Energy doctor treating a, a particular minister in Lagos and walked down to the church in the morning. Congregation were there. He walked straight to the altar and pulled out the altar and collected the juju and walked away. <laughs> yes. How many of you heard of it? How many of you heard of it? Raise your hand. God bless you. Walk in the church, congregation full, straight with his regalia to the altar. Push away the altar and carry his juju and walk away. <laughs> you have gone to those places. Aaron have sold us. He's moving here, he's moving here. You rush. Are you saved? Are you born again? Does the spirit of God dwells in you? Who are these errors? Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, I read verse 18. And to 20. Revelation chapter 2, 18. And unto the angel of the church in Titara write, This thing saith the Son of God, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Verse 19. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, that woman, that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself what? So there are self appointed apostles, self appointed prophets. These are the errors we are talking about. That's why, who made you a prophet? Who made you an apostle? Who made you whatever? Thou sufferest that woman called Jezebel. Who called herself what? A prophetess. A prophetess. To teach and to do what? To seduce my servant to commit fornication. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I don't know many women in the church. You don't know where. That's why we must be careful. You see women, those who are supposed to be mothers in Israel. And they are competing with their daughters in fashion. said if they do these things in the green tree what shall happen in the dry you see a whole responsible woman married she will sew cloth and carry waterproof and put here and you are saying you're a leader yeah his mother in Israel raise your hand the brother sitting by your side go to her <laughs> Jezebel That 
death is not fornication. What is it? Yes. What did the Bible say? Listen, it's not a loving matter, but it's a serious matter. Jesus said, if you will cause this little one that believe on me to stumble, it will be better you are not born. How many of you has caused many brothers to stumble by the way you dress, by the way you expose your body? He said, I have somewhat against you, for thou suffered that woman called Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, to seduce my people. These are the errors we are talking about. Who are they? Those that call themselves apostles and prophets and pastors. Who are these errors? They are the ones who have refused to be discipled. Who are not discipled? Ask me, who is your father spiritually? Who is your father? Who discipled you? You run from here to here, freelance, independent. You don't want to sit down to learn. You don't want to be too taught. The Bible tells me in the book of Luke chapter 2 from verse 41 to 52, Jesus, at the age of 12, went to the church with his parents. And after the service, the parents left. He was still in the church. And they were looking for him for three days. Eventually, they found him in the church. And said, son, why have you thus dead with us? We've been looking for you, sorrow, sorrowing. Jesus said, why must you be looking for me? Don't you know that I must be about my father's what? Business. What was his father's business? The Bible says he was sitting and listening and what? Learning. The king of kings and the lord of lords. Where are the young men? Where are the youth that God intend to prepare to hand over the button? But they will not want to sit down to learn. You must go to that school that Moses went. God took him through the wilderness experience to train him, to chisel out things and to perfect things in his life. You must go through that school that John the Baptist went. It was in the wilderness. Every one of them, all that God ever used, went through that school. Jesus himself went through the wilderness. As they baptized at the bank of River Jordan, the Bible says he was led of the Spirit. To where? You must go through that school. And today, there are many who don't want to go to that school. They want to become general overseer overnight. His, his majesty overnight. His preeminence overnight. Very soon, it will become his God. They don't want to sit down to learn. The Bible said Jesus from the age of 12 until they get to the age of what? How many years? From the age of 12, he was there. He is our perfect example. Our perfect example. Look unto him. That's why God said, this is my beloved son. In him, in him, in him, I am what? Well pleased. Who are the errors? They don't want to sit down to learn. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, errors, we're talking about the, those who are errors. Who are they? Because of time, you can write it down. Philippians chapter 3, 17 to 19. Second King chapter 5, verse 20 to 27. The Bible talked about those whose bellies, bellies are what? They are God. These are the errands. Their belly is their God. They are working for their God. They are working for their belly, not for God. The Bible calls them the enemies of the cross. The God they serve is their belly. And so that's why you see them, they milk dry the children of God. Those they are pastoring, they milk them dry. Because what? They are God. Whom they serve is what? Their belly. They do everything to satisfy their belly, their desire. And so they become enemies of the cross. 
2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20. Here you will see Gehazi. And that's revealed this motive why he joined the ministry. One would have thought that he joined the ministry because he's, he has seen the wickedness, the darkness that is in the land. And he wants to follow Elisha in order to get the triple anointing, to be able to undo the works of darkness. It's a lie. But with time, it revealed what was in his heart. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 20, the Bible says, When Naaman came and he received his miracle through the instrumentality of Elisha, and Elisha asked him to go with all that he came. He has a bitty finger. What? What is this man talking about? That we should leave this man to go with all these things? Doesn't he know that this is why I joined the ministry? 